All right, back to some more transformation. So this one's called a reflection. Let's see how reflections work. So we've already graphed um, y equals x squared a couple times. It makes that parabola. So I'm just going to throw it on there. Um, so what we're going to do in this example is see what happens when we put a negative out front. So it'll be negative x squared. So negative x squared, um, for the sake of evaluating, means negative, and then whatever we plug in goes in parentheses, squared. So the negative is not being squared. It's outside. So I'm just going to plug in those same numbers we've been using, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Let's go ahead and plug those in. So for negative 2, it means we have a negative outside and then a negative 2 in parentheses, and we square it. So we'll get negative 4. For a negative 1, there's a negative outside, negative 1 squared is positive 1, and then negative on the outside, negative 1. So negative 1, 1. 0 squared is 0, right? Negative 0 is 0. So it's maybe making a parabola shape upside down. Let's try 1. Negative 1 squared is negative 1, right? Because the negative is outside. And then negative 2 squared is negative 4. So we get like a reflection on the other side. And so it looks like um, it makes the same graph, but upside down. This is called a reflection. It's when the graph is reflected about the x or y axis. So this one is reflected about the x axis because we folded the x axis. And this again goes under the rigid category because the shape does not change. So rigid just means the shape does not change. It just moves. And so there's two types of reflections. It depends if the negative is inner or outer. So an outer, um, would, an outer negative would be reflected about the x-axis, and that's because it's like upside down. It's a vertical flip, right? Right, we're folding, I don't know, we might not all see that as vertical, but we're folding it upside down. And then the inner, which we'll see in a second, um, is about the y-axis, so it's basically like sideways. So remember, inners are x's, so it's about the y-axis, but it's really like the x's are getting flipped. So let's check some of these out. So let's look at the graph of x cubed. We know that one already. Um, and we're going to do some reflections. So the first graph I always like to draw nice and light. If I use pencil, you can use that. But that would be x cubed, right? That's our parent function. Um, and then we're going to reflect in the x-axis. So reflecting in the x-axis would be the outer version. So that would mean f of x is just negative x cubed, right? It's outer rather than within parentheses. Um, and this just reflects upside down, right? So we're going to take that same graph and make it upside down. So that's upside down and that's upside down. And then what's next? And then we're going to shift up two units. So we go up two. Let's do this in a different color. So it looks like that. So up two. And then in case we don't remember, that's adding two, outer, right? Up and down is an outer move. So our new function will be negative x cubed plus two to shift it up. So combining those previous um, transformations. And there's one last type of transformation, so let's check that out. Um, these are non-rigid, and non-rigid means the shape's going to change, which we'll see in a second. So let's go back to that f of x equals x squared. Um, I'm going to label the points that we had seen, so 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. Those will be significant. Negative 1, 1, right? Negative 2, 4. I'm doing this fast, right? Because we've made this one 
in multiple videos multiple times now. So that's my y equals x squared. Let's check out if I put a 2 in front. So I'm going to do those same five points we've been doing. You don't have to choose these five, right? We've just been using them, so I'm going to keep using them. Let me label this as a reminder. All right, y equals x squared. So what happens if I plug in 2 now? So we get y equals 2 and then times negative 2 squared. So we'll get 2 times 4, which is 8. So let's make room for 8 on my graph. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we're going to go to 2, and it looks like it's just going to be way higher than the previous one. Oops, negative 2, sorry. Um, if I plug in 1, negative 1, we get negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. So negative 1, 2. 0, 2 times 0 is 0, so 0, 0. So that point actually matches x squared. Why don't you plug in 1 and plug in 2? So for 1, I get 2, and then for 2, I get 8 again, so 2 and 8. All right, we still have that same symmetry we've been having, 2 and 8. And we're going to get another parabola, but it looks, the shape's a little different. What do we think? It's like steeper creates a steeper parabola. So it's still a parabola, but the shape is distorted. So that's what not rigid does. It distorts the shape a little. So anytime we multiply by a constant, we get one of these um, stretches. So if the constant is bigger than one, it's going to stretch vertically, right? It's going to make it grow faster, so it stretches it. Um, if it's a fraction less than one, um, then it's going to compress it and kind of shrink it a little. So in terms of parabolas, right, this one will be nice and steep. This one will be kind of like smushed. Um, and then we don't really have to worry about horizontal here because um, it's actually the same thing, right? If you notice, the one I just drew is actually compressed horizontally. So it's easier to just do one direction. So we only have to worry about vertical. And then horizontal kind of does the opposite, but the vertical takes care of it because they're happening at the same time. So let's check this next one out. Let's find an equation and a graph for the same thing we've been doing. So um, we're going to go back to that x squared. Doo, 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 doo. That's my parent function. We really want to be comfortable with these parent functions. Um, we're going to compress it this time. So compress means it gets smushed. So it means it's going to be wider and shorter. So that's compressed vertically. In terms of a function, that means we multiply by 1 half. And then we're going to shift to the right. So remember, left and right means we have an input change. And then remember, the x's always do the opposite. So that means 1 half, it's going to be in the parentheses because it's left and right. Um, outside parentheses is up and down. And then to the right means minus 1 squared. So it looks like that. And that's our graph. Let me know if you have questions, right? An up or down change would look like this, right? on the outside, so that's the difference. Left and right changes are inside. So I'll see you on the next video.